tutorial is brought to you by PostBargain.com. 3D props at bargain prices. I want to start off this tutorial by saying that the technique I'm about to show you is a bit unusual and may not be to everyone's taste because it can seem like a lot of work to set up. I love using ZBrush sometimes for painting certain textures because Photoshop doesn't always have the tools I want. But the lack of Photoshop like layer and opacity functions in ZBrush can make it frustrating, especially when you want to use your UV map as a reference. Take note, Pixelogic. I would like to thank the ever helpful Marco Sivis from ZBrush Central for providing me with an important part of this technique. A major credit goes to him. But before we begin, I'd just like to mention that you can use any 3D program to start off. It's the technique and not the program that's important at the start here. Okay, so here's an old head model I made in Lightwave. The UVs are already unwrapped. I removed the ears from the model just to make the map simpler. For the next part, you need to turn your UV map into an actual polygon object. Luckily, Lightwave lets you do this with the EPS export function. Firstly, make sure the object is loaded and select the UV map you want to export. I think you can only export one UV map at a time, so make sure you pick the correct one. Then, go into File, Export, Export Encapsulated Postscript. This will bring up the export window. The first thing you need to change is the view setting to Texture UV. Secondly, click on Export File and set where you want to export your file. The rest of the settings should be kept to the default settings. Press OK once you're done. Create a new object, then go into File, Import, EPSF Loader, which will bring up a new window. Click on the triangle next to the EPSF file field and click OK to load up the EPSF file you just made. I like to merge all the points after I've imported the file just to keep things neat, but it's not really necessary. What you do next with this mesh is up to you. Basically, what you do is construct a new mesh that will be used as reference for when you are painting your texture in ZBrush. It's important to make sure that you keep within the boundaries of the UV square though. Using the UV mesh, I created this reference mesh focusing my polygons in the important areas of the face. You can also create a polygon version of your UV map just by beveling all the polygons of the UV mesh and deleting the center polygons. How much you bevel is up to you, but please note that the amount of bevel will reflect in the image resolution later in ZBrush. Once you have your new reference mesh, export it out as an OBJ and load it up into ZBrush. The first thing you need to do is to go into the document menu and set the size of your document. This should be the same size as the texture you wanted to paint. Because it is a UV texture, the size will be the same height as the width. Select your mesh OBJ file that you exported out of Lightwave or your native 3D program and draw it onto your canvas. Hold down shift so that it draws out flush onto your canvas. Make sure that the object is facing you straight on and not at some odd angle. Go into edit mode, then select the flat shader from your materials menu. Also, select black as your color. Go into your color menu and select fill object. Now, go into tool, deformation, unify. I don't know exactly what this tool does, but according to the steps Marcus provided, it was necessary. Thanks again, Marcus. Get out of edit mode and select the scale tool. Your object should now have the transformation gyro in the center of it. Now, click on the transform menu and click on info to expand it. With these coordinates, we are going to move and scale the object so it fits perfectly onto the canvas. Highlight the number under the X component and type in half the canvas size. So, if your texture is 1024 pixels square, then you type in 512. Then type the same number for the Y component. Get out of the menu and select the Move tool. Now, go back into the Info menu and change both the X and Y component to half your canvas size. The object should now fit perfectly onto your canvas. 
you still need to create a new layout to draw on. So go into your Layers menu and select Create to make a new layer. Select the flat shader from the Materials menu again and pick a white color or the base color of your texture. Now, go into your color menu and select Fill Layer. One final thing you need to do is to go back into the layer menu and play around with the Displace Z option until you get the black reference mesh layer on top. And now you can start painting on your texture. Just make sure that when you do use the 2D painting tools that you turn off Z add or Z sub with each tool used. Also, stick with a flat shader. It may seem like a bit of work, but it can be worth it just to use the great painting tools in ZBrush. After you've painted your texture, make the black mesh reference layer invisible and export out the texture. Keep a saved copy of the ZBrush document in case you need to make changes in the future. The good thing is that you can place more than one mesh for referencing and swap in between when you want to focus on a certain part of your texture. So, I hope that this tutorial was helpful. Even though ZBrush is great for painting textures, there's no shame in importing the texture into Photoshop to do some tweaking there. Oh, and before you all start posting comments that you can just use Projection Master to do the same thing, don't forget that Projection Master is limited to the portion of your mesh that is visible. And this technique gives perfect visible pixel to final pixel ratio. Anyway, good luck in your future texturing projects. Thank you.